What's up, people? It's George from Crypto Potato, and today we'll talk gaming, a very favorite topic of mine. More specifically, we sat down with Vitek Radomski, the CTO and co founder of the leading NFT ecosystem developer Engine. Vitek is a veteran in the cryptocurrency space, having built a ton of blockchain software products. He's also the one who wrote the code for one of the first ever NFTs all the way back in 2017 and the author of Ethereum Improvement Proposal 1155. In this episode, we chat about NFTs, blockchain-based gaming, the metaverse, and we try to answer the question if that's the next big thing or just a temporary fad. So stay tuned, hit the like button if you enjoy the content, subscribe to our channel and smash the notification bell so you don't miss on any new episodes coming in the future. Hello, Vitek. Uh, first of all, thank you for agreeing to do this. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a blast interview slash conversation. And, yeah, thank uh, we're, you. Yeah, we're happy to have you here. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but my research showed that you are you wrote the code for one of the first NFTs back in 2017. Is that correct? Yeah, so I'm actually the, I'm the author of ERC 1155, and before we made that into a standard, um, we were actually building this. Uh, so I, I wrote the first uh, contract, uh, you know, way back before even ERC 721 was a standard as well, because we needed to make tokens for games. We needed to make something that supported fungible things like you know gems and health kits and and currencies inside games, as well as non fungible unique things. So yeah, we started that early 2017 it's been crazy since then that's pretty awesome we're definitely circling back to that but first um can can i take you back a little bit and maybe you can share with us how how did you get into crypto and when did you get into crypto yeah so it, it, it was a long time ago I think it was around 2011 ish or so 2011 2012 basically um i started hearing about it first from one of my friends who he's a sort of a futurist guy and he was he was telling me oh dude you should check out this uh, this thing called bitcoin you know this white paper is amazing um and back then it you know it was i think it was less than a dollar per bitcoin and he was talking about how oh one day it's going to be you know on par on par with it one dollar it'll be amazing right um, and, uh, so I, I went and I installed Bitcoin QT and it was like really crappy experience. I was like, who's going to use this? It seems like some sort of another one of those, you know, digital cash things that I saw, you know, digital yeah. coins. I was like, uh, but I didn't really read the white paper and I guess that was my mistake. But then, um, I saw s some people, uh, in, in, in my city, uh, buying a lot of graphics cards. And, um, this was probably in 2012 or so. And I was asking them, you know, why are you buying all these graphics cards? You must be doing a lot of gaming. And they were like, no, uh, I'm mining, right? I'm mining. And I'm like, oh, oh, this Bitcoin thing, right? So uh, I went and looked at it again and it was uh, it was very interesting. So I started becoming part of the, the Bitcoin community uh, in my city. And, uh, you know, it, it, I was really interested in the concept of colored coins. Some people were throwing around, which eventually, you know, now is, is smart contracts on Ethereum. Um, so yeah, I was I was I was into it in an early early time. Um, I really got into it in 2013 and uh, got sort of involved. And I, I I was like I was there when they launched the first Bitcoin ATM in Vancouver, um, and uh, I was part of the the kind of community and and kind of getting getting involved with all the people around that space. So um, Ethereum was was quite quite mind blowing when I first heard about it. Um, I still didn't understand the concept of an ICO when they first proposed that. I was like, "What? Well, that's not how you do crypto." <laughs> but uh, it, you know, obviously, that, that's what uh, kicked everything off. So, yeah. how how did you make this transition from Bitcoin to Ethereum? And that because the ecosystems are pretty different, how did you how did you shift towards what Ethereum is building? And yeah, to be honest, before Ethereum came out, uh, uh, some friends and I were kind of trying to brainstorm how how uh smart contracts could be done and uh, you know i was running uh, engine was actually a gaming company we were, we were creating social networks for gamers so people could put up a website 
for their guild or clan. And, uh, you know, I was the CTO of, of, of managing all that. So we were, uh, you know, dealing with infrastructure servers, massive databases. And we were thinking about how we could, you know, how we could do smart contracts. But then Ethereum, you know, came up with this, this idea and, and, you know, that was just, you know, revolutionary. So um, I've, I've, I've always wanted to, you know, do smart contracts back then. I was like, well, this is amazing. It's going to be an internet computer uh, decentralized. Um, so yeah, after, after that, you know, we, we, we actually were one of the first companies to support uh, Bitcoin payments in, in our uh, online services uh, for gamers. And then, uh, you know, when, when Ethereum really started taking off, we saw the ERC 20s come out. We said, let's, let's jump into this. A lot of a lot of our communities, our gaming communities, would actually have donation systems where you could even donate and get rewards inside a game like Minecraft or uh, some perks in the guild or things like that. And so, or subscribe to the website and things like that, and, and get some some perks. So we said, you know what? Let's let's do something better. Let's innovate in this space. Let's go into blockchain. You know, firmly plant our feet and 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 say, let's let's uh, build a toolkit for game developers to use these new kinds of tokens inside their games, because the power of decentralization for this is, is huge. Can you explain it to uh, like in a, in a more simpler way? What is it that engine does? Like uh, if you can drill it down to the bedrock and summarize it in a nutshell, what is it that you guys do? So we help anyone tokenize all aspects of their digital life. So we're seeing that people are you know, spending so much time now online in virtual worlds, virtual spaces, uh, whether it's VR or web or mobile or in just regular video games. And so we want to we want to make it easy for both a developer that's making games or making these virtual worlds or brands uh, to, to easily use fungible and non-fungible tokens. Uh, they don't need to hire a, you know, a giant blockchain team and spend a year developing things or uh, deal with difficult security of smart contracts and wallets and all this kind of stuff. We want to make it super simple. You plug it in. Uh, you can have gamification in your business or, in, or having tokens directly integrated inside your game. So let's say our, our end goal is, you know, people go into a virtual universe or the metaverse or a game. They can start sending and receiving tokens. Uh, they'll have a digital identity um, that will, they'll, ha they'll have their assets. And they can persist this for thousands of years because blockchain's not gonna, you can't shut it down. So, you know, I, I've played games for a long time and uh, all my life basically. And, you know, most of the games that I've played are offline now, the servers are gone. All that time I spent in the games, that's all deleted, it's all gone. Um, I would love to have, even just for the nostalgia value, but even, uh, you know, just to, 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 to have my whole digital history uh, persist with me. and. Uh, some of the most uh, amazing, engaging games that I played with actually had mods that you could do or, um, you know, ways to extend the game or APIs that could look into the data of the game and people would build websites around that and, and whole communities around that would grow. And so blockchain lets you do that kind of thing. And it gives you full control of your assets. It means your, your identity, all that time and effort and money and, and energy you're putting inside a virtual world stays with you. Um, so uh, yeah, but we're doing it for the developers and for the end users to make it easy for people as well to, to use. It's always very nice to chat to a fellow gamer. I've also played games pretty much my entire life. Now I'm continuing to play them. And um, actually, I wanted to touch upon something you said and perhaps compare it a little bit to what we're currently seeing because games are obviously on the rise uh, in the crypto community. I don't think we've seen so much discussions uh, around gaming in general than we, we saw in the past couple of months. But I also played a few of them, um, probably the most popular ones. I'm not going to name, name them, but what I felt was that it was lacking like blockchain based gaming as it is right now feels very probably the word i want to use is underdeveloped um it it, it just doesn't feel like uh 2021 when i'm playing a blockchain based game and you said that back in uh 2011 when you when you first dabbled with bitcoin you also felt that it's just scratchy it's just uh you know another part of um digital cash and 
Do you think that this is perhaps where we are right now when it comes to blockchain-based gaming? Do you think that this is the 2011 of blockchain-based gaming? Or, of course, uh, if you agree that most of the games that are currently um, out there are not as good UX, UI-wise compared to traditional games? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a complex question because there's a lot of people developing all kinds of games, but you'd see a lot of the low hanging fruit, you know, the, the, the people who are crypto focused, wanting to make a game. Um, and so naturally that game turns out being something that involves trading, purchasing, because yeah. it's sort of in a crypto mindset, you know, earning money while playing a game, uh, you know. So yeah, th there, there's a place for those games, but I don't think that's going to attract you know, the mainstream audience, it's going to attract maybe a 0.1% of, of gamers that want to earn some money and do things yeah. like that. Um, but uh, what, what, what we really want to focus on is games that people want to play. So fun games uh, where the game design is actually, it uses blockchain in an interesting way. Um, so, you know, I played games in the past. I mean, there's obviously the old MMORPGs where you could do things like in some of them, you could even own some land, right? Uh, if we integrate blockchain concepts into that, where you can own things, you can trade them, um, th th they go outside of the actual walled garden of the game. Um, that, that's a really powerful concept. Um, also, th there's so many little tools you can play with. So with blockchain gaming, I mean, I mean right now it's, it's always been, like I said, card games, trading, uh, collectible critters or whatever. Um, but you know, you have this, you have this, um, the ability to own the item, which is, you know, people love that, that sort of, I own it. Um, it's now worth something. It's mine. It's not, you know, it's not just the game developer's property. Then secondly, you have these, this sort of social aspect where, you know, people can, can, can create these, uh, these cr cross game, uh, tr transfers, cross, cross player economies. Um, you have uh, the, the history of the blockchain, like everything is persisted forever. You could have games tapping into that history and using that in interesting ways in gameplay. You, you can also do things like crafting where you can actually let people mint tokens or create things in games. Um, you can have a whole creator economy around a game and, and have that as part of the gameplay. You could have, um, you know, high stakes where like, uh, I keep bringing up an example where, you know, imagine you have a tower defense game in AR where you can literally go into the world um, and find towers that you can blow up and uh, pick up tokens off the ground, for example, you know. Um, I'd love to see th things like that happen where they, they mix these different uh, technologies together. Um, so uh, there's a lot of things to play with and there's, there's, there's experiments that people have done where, you know, with land ownership and these kind of things where, you know, you have a finite game universe and then the blockchain is used to, to kind of make those scarce resources uh, something that can be traded and, and used in interesting ways. Um, there's also the whole cross, cross game metaverse. And uh, that, that's, that, that's something we're actually seeing brands that are in the physical space want to integrate with the digital space. So, I mean, we've seen some fashion brands already try to do this already. So uh, the, the kind of fashion skin metaverse um, we also see uh, sports, sports kind of uh, leagues and sports uh, organizations wanting to to link their their actual uh, brand with uh, with uh, sports games and things like that. Um, and then games that have series, like you know one, two, three, four, uh, they might want to have blockchain assets uh, move to the next uh, copies of that game. And um, so, what I wanted to 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 double down on is current valuation of most of the games at least the more the more popular games like for instance i played um, uh, decentral i didn't play i just wandered around decentraland and the first thing i noticed it was pretty empty i didn't see almost anyone anywhere but the spawning place where you fall down and in, in the starting place but i didn't see a lot of players just going around, although a lot of the land was already bought and there were a lot of things already built on, like there were galleries, there were museums and whatnot. It was like the, the UX and the UI was a bit scuffed, but honestly, it felt nice. I mean, it felt nice just wandering around this um, 
completely digital universe and interacting with things that you can actually see. Like for instance, I went into a gallery and uh, the exhibition uh, displayed certain NFTs and I could click on those NFTs. It would uh, redirect me to, to the marketplace where I could actually buy them, see how much they're worth. This is pretty cool. This is like, this is straight off really, really cool, but it was empty. It was completely empty. And yet this thing is worth like billions of dollars. At least its current valuation is very, very high. Do you think that right now, perhaps we're seeing a little, a little bit of euphoria around these types of games? Well, again, it's, it's super early. So people are, again, they're coming at from, uh, from a crypto centric perspective. Um, these are kind of, uh, you know, they're kind of games, but they're not, you know, they're not Fortnite yeah. or they're not uh, Half-Life, right? They're, yeah. they're kind of virtual experiments. Um, and again, we, when I want to go play a game, you know, I log on and I, I play a game that I really want to have fun in, right? I, I don't go uh, immediately to like Decentraland or, or any of these crypto yeah. games because, you know, there's a different mentality. It's like, okay, maybe I'll want to trade in those games or make some money in those games. But uh, it's, it's all about inspiring game developers to think about blockchain, how they could use it in an interesting way in their games. Uh, I've, I've been speaking to the larger game developers um, across the space for the last three or four years. Um, ever since we, we went to Game Developers Conference in 2018, um, I spoke to, spoke to some large game devs there. I uh, went to Europe and spoke to uh, some very, very significant game devs uh, who were kind of poking around and, and looking around the, the blockchain conferences, wondering how this could fit into their games. Now they are, they're actually really starting to take this seriously. And, and the, uh, in the beginning, I'm seeing some of them, you know, some, some players that have established games, they want to do little, little baby steps, right? They want to maybe enable skins or some sort of fashion in their games and see how that plays out, do a pilot for one or two years. Um, and then we have some people who want to build a full blockchain game. I spoke to a, a, a creator of one of the largest Facebook kind of based games uh, recently, and uh, he tried to build something on Ethereum and it was a terrible experience. He said, this is, there's no way this is going to work. It's so expensive. Uh, the, the wallets are difficult. Everything is, is difficult to do. Um, so that's why we, we started building something called Efinity on Polkadot, because we, we realized we've been hearing this for a few years that game developers just don't see this working with a mainstream audience that easily. Um, so we wanted to remove a bunch of friction points and we wanted to make it, you know, people can just jump in, start playing a game like a mainstream user experience, uh, not have to go install MetaMask and all kinds of things and, and, and deal with that. Because the mainstream, you know, 99.9% .9 of people will want to play a game, have fun, and then, oh, there's some, I'm getting some free items here, or, you know, oh, I can use these items and trade with players as part of the gameplay. This is really cool. How can I get into this? And then they're going to, that's the best way to onboard the mainstream. And it's, we're, we're in the very early days again. It's like, you know, email on the internet right now. Uh, email, wow, what an amazing concept. You know, you see the videos of people talking about this will change the world. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're, we will get there as, as some, some really good game examples uh, come online, some game developers start building things. People will have to see it in action uh, and then they'll start, pe people's minds will start opening up. So, um, you know, NFTs, we were lucky to see NFTs get a big explosion this year. The downside of it is that a lot of people sort of say, well, this is terrible. Uh, it's going to turn all games into just, uh, you know, pay payment models. Uh, but uh, I, I think we need to show people this can be used for real interesting gameplay. And what do you think is the biggest challenge to get there? Uh, in my opinion, just ease of use and UX. Um, user has to be able to play a game, not realize they're using blockchain at all. So uh, what we're trying to do in Efinity, um, just give people the, the ability to subsidize their gamers' transactions. People can start playing, trading, doing all this kind of stuff. Their wallets will be filled up in the background. And then uh, they can claim ownership when they're ready to actually take ownership of their, of their wallet. Um, making it easy to, to, to do all kinds of transactions, crafting, that, so you don't have to have a big blockchain team needed to, 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 to do all the security and, and, and work in the background. Um, 
it'll all be done in, a, in an SDK. It's all done ready for you as a game developer. And then you can start being creative with these tools. How do we solve the scaling problem? Because uh, the way I picture it, for instance, I'm playing some sort of an MMO and uh, I transact with another player and I send him, for example, one item that I've acquired in the universe and it's mine in the form of, of an NFT, for instance, it's mine, but he wants to buy it from me and uh, I want to sell it to him. Like, how do we scale? Like, if, if we're achieving conventional gaming uh, metrics, how do we scale this to the point where a lot of players can be doing this at the same time, all the time? Yeah, so scaling is, is there's, there's so many people doing different approaches to scaling. And the one that's, that we've seen uh, be very popular this year has been taking, you know, looking at Ethereum, um, building another blockchain that's uh, cheap Ethereum and sort of, you know, going, going for it there. Oh, you can just do everything you did on Ethereum, but for a fraction of a penny. But uh, that is a bit short-sighted. I, I think Ethereum, you know, they're, they're going to try to shard their network out. They're going to pro proof of stake and then sharding. Um, but uh, that's not going to solve the fundamental problem. The, the, the issue is Ethereum is a, is a general purpose, uh, you know, computing platform for making smart right. contracts. That makes it very heavy. Uh, every token is a smart contract. You have to deploy so many contracts out. Um, everything has to be super general purpose. Everything has to be paranoid. All the contracts have to have to be, you know, have security around them. What we're doing with Affinity is basically making NFTs and all tokens native. We're developing a standard to make it super native. That way we can optimize everything. Uh, when you want to mint a million tokens, you don't do a million transactions to mint tokens. You can use our, our batch and chunk extensions to, we store the tiniest amount of data to, to mint those tokens. Uh, when you want to move hundreds of thousands of tokens around, again, tiny, tiny amount of data to do that. Um, so th those optimizations, you know, reduce the, the data load, uh, orders of magnitude. Um, we can clean the state. Another, another issue is not just data, but just the state, the amount of stuff that needs to stay in memory for the blockchain to, to work. Uh, we can clean the state when people, you know, get their, when their accounts don't have any assets anymore, when they remove assets, um, when they burn things, they can be completely cleared from the state. Um, but, you know, beyond that, um, after, after like all these, these, these low hanging fruit optimizations, there will be a, a, a place for things like state channels. So when people are in a game and they're doing, uh, you know, many transactions in between each other in that, in that little session, we can compress all that into, into a state channel and make it, you know, way more uh, way cheaper so yeah. it would be really awesome to be able to play some sort of an mmo where the things you acquire are actually yours and, and and are not really owned by the game developer you can transact with those things i can really see myself losing a lot of time playing something like this uh, yeah yeah i used to i used to play mmos uh a few thousand hours for sure definitely yeah. thousands of hours into those mmos and uh we had guilds that would own items, right? And the, the guild would manage those between the players. There was things like DKP, um, and there was- You're talking, uh, about, you're talking about World of Warcraft right now, right? There's World of Warcraft, <laughs> and then there's other ones too. There was, you know, yeah. there's, there's many, that, that whole era back then of, of all these different MMOs that everyone yeah, was yeah. Like, hundreds of thousands or millions of players, it was, it was pretty vibrant. Um, and yeah, we, we, there's a lot of like trading. There's like people selling things on eBay. There's in-game bartering and trading. Um, but then, you know, now you look back and a lot of that stuff is probably lost. Um, yep. You might be able to reactivate accounts on some games, but some of them are completely deleted. Uh, I know a lot of the, the MMOs and different games I played back back in the day, it's all gone. Yeah. Um, so even just for Nostalgia Bell, it'd be nice to, to access that stuff again. I remember a case back in 2007. It was World of Warcraft, uh, The Burning Crusade, or maybe it was a little bit later. And then there is this guy who, who leveled up a rock and was the first one to obtain the um, Illidan graves, Glaives. These legendary weapons, everyone wanted them because they looked like Illidan Storm Rage weapons. And he sold his account for 7,000 euros, which back then was a lot of money. And um, Blizzard noticed that the person who bought the account wasn't as good as the person who, uh, who was playing before that. because for you to obtain those items you need to put in hundreds if not thousands of hours into this character 
and actually be good at the game. And the one who bought it wasn't. He was just a regular person who just started playing this class. And he was, he had nothing to do with it. And Blizzard noticed this and banned uh, the account, which is something that blockchain solves, right? Because it's it's not cool to to spend either money or effort on something and then know that this isn't yours in any any shape or form. I mean, the moment Sorry. the developer decides to pull the plug, all of these hours you've put into the game are just wiped clean and, and it's all been for nothing pretty much, except exactly. for the fun you've had, but like, it's always nice to have something that, that represents the time that you've put into this. Of course, um, it's your digital identity, right? It's, yeah, it's exactly. You're putting in. It's your social connections with your friends. It's it's everything that you're, you're doing in, in this digital world. As as these digital worlds get more immersive and we spend more time over the next decade in these virtual spaces, um, you don't want to be deplatformed out of your virtual life. I mean, virtual life is going to be so core to people's identity as time progresses. You know, yeah. being deplatformed is crazy, right? Like it's 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 kind of a almost you could almost call it a human right to have a virtual yeah. identity, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're trying to fix here. And I think we're gradually uh, shifting towards a discussion about the metaverse. Uh, you guys launched a $100 million fund to help developers and projects who are building towards the metaverse. But like before asking you more about this, can you tell me what do you, how do you define the metaverse? for yourself, because I know there are a lot of definitions, people get it differently, that's completely fine, of course, but how do you, how do you get the metaverse? What is the metaverse for you? I, I see the metaverse as a, a massive network of both decentralized and centralized worlds, universes, assets, uh, people um, that, that can interact with each other in some way. Um, I don't think uh, on day one, it's going to be like a beautiful API that everyone uh, standard that everyone follows like, you know, on the internet, but I think there's going to be many standards and bridges and ways to connect these things. So there's going to be the Facebook and Oculus met metaverse, well, meta, the meta, the meta metaverse. Um, and then there's going to be all, all the different game platforms and game studios, there's going to be vir various virtual universes, and then this whole decentralized world uh, with different blockchains where people are people have, you know, financial assets, um, you know, art and collectibles and games and all these kind of things. Um, and what I see this turning into is, is basically this digital layer of everyone's lives. Um, you know, you can, you can interact with the digital world, this sort of, you know, other plane of existence um, and, and everything should somehow eventually flow smoothly between each other. So if you, you have a game on Facebook or if you have a game on uh, a, a, another platform or a console or mobile or on, on AR or VR, um, you should be able to take your identity, move them th through these different metaverses. Um, we also see the, 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 the potential of different worlds collaborating with each other. We did an experiment a few years ago where we, we created a bunch of multiverse items, we called them. And we asked seven or eight games to use these different items. So people could take an item like a sword and take it into a sci-fi game, a, a fantasy game, and take it across all these different games. And, and you know, this was really interesting. It was a really interesting experience to see your, your same Sounds item. Very cool. to, yeah, you could bring it, bring it across many different games. And you know, same thing with your identity. You, want, you, you probably want some kind of identity that, that wants to persist uh, through different kinds of uh, worlds and experiences. So. Um, it's going to be a complex thing for people to understand. I think there's a lot of evolution that needs to happen in the space. We don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, you know, we, no one really knows quite well. I, Facebook is probably going to define some way of your avatar and, and thing, things happening in the metaverse. Steam and, and Epic are probably going to have their own uh, perceptions of it. And then in the decentralized space, you're going to have your wallets and things like that. Um, but I think these will all slowly start to merge and form your full digital identity and, and your assets. Do you think uh, that's a problem that Facebook and a lot of big companies are starting to double into the concept of the metaverse? Do you think that we will see some sort of a centralization issue there? I don't think it's actually an issue. Um, I, I actually spoke with Matthew Ball, um, who's working on strategy at, at Meta a couple of days ago. And uh, he also sees this in the same way where there's going to be centralized metaverses and decentralized metaverses, and they will all play together. Um, you know, there's some people that are, there's some com big companies that are kind of set in their ways. 
uh, and they're putting their foot down and saying, you know, we're, we're not, you know, we're, we're just going to have this walled garden and that's it. But um, I think in general, everyone will eventually start to merge into the metaverse. And there's places for centralized platforms, especially when you want to have a very, you know, very controlled game experience and you don't want the, the outside world to, to really, you know, have trading and affect that too much. Um, but uh, it'll all, I think, merge into each other. So what we don't want to see is just one company like Facebook or Google or whoever it is controlling the entire metaverse and and you know, it's, it's very easy for people to just jump to platforms like that and they grow huge and then no one really has any reason to leave it, right? But then you start having, you know, governments getting involved, laws being put down, people being deplatformed, and that's the problem with it, right? So we will have decentralized and centralized aspects and I think they will balance each other out. Okay, and um, we mentioned your fund. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're trying to achieve with this affinity fund yeah so we want people to uh we want game developers that have experimental interesting ideas anyone who wants to go into the metaverse uh to have some support and we we, we want to you know have a fund that can support these projects um a lot of the time if somebody has a interesting experimental metaverse idea it might be difficult to get funded in the traditional means um it, these 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 models are completely alien to a lot of um, a lot of um, you know VCs and, and and traditional game funding mechanisms. So we want to we want to support this. Um, we we have this this fund available. Um, we have Efinity with a treasury that the community can also use to to, to vote for projects that uh, that need funding. So yeah, we're we're we want to deploy this and, and bring thousands of adopters onto the onto our our segment of this metaverse. I know it might be a little early to ask this because you only, uh, that's what I, I was checking. When did you launch the fund, the fund? And it was pretty recently. But did you already see some exciting ideas? Or, and of course, if you're allowed to talk about it. Yeah, so we are, we are, we, we are actually talking to many. We, we have a whole department on, at, at uh, Engine and Infinity that, that talks to uh, adopters and, and games. And so, yes, we, we have a lot of games uh, applying and, and interested in this. Uh, and we have some people that, that will vet the projects and then see you know, what their teams are like and, and then apply the fund. Um, our goal next year is really to, to, to really evolve our ecosystem. We have the tools in place. We're going to be launching our new open platform, our marketplace, our, our new blockchain, Affinity. And now we, we want to onboard both large brands, large enterprises and organizations and small indies who have experimental, interesting ideas and uh, need some support. And you know that fund is not only gonna be funding, it's also gonna be development support and, and kind of helping them along the way. And I have two more things that I want to ask you. The first one is where do you see blockchain-based gaming in let's say five years from now? Five years from now, I see that uh, there will definitely be triple A's. I, I can definitely say there will be multiple triple A game developers on board. There will be uh, some superstar games that you know have, have had massive success in the past, uh, trying trying to create new games uh, using blockchain technology in creative ways. Um, and there's going to be a huge explosion of indie games. Those games that were you know originally going on green light, um, they will be they'll be basically kickstarting their games and creating games uh, with new concepts. So and I, 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 I definitely see this moving out of the very small insular sort of crypto, crypto space into actual game developers building fun games and experiences. I see it being cross-platform in five years. You can go onto your console, your streaming console, or your uh, mobile phone or PC and be able to play uh, various kinds of games that, that can utilize this stuff. Um, I also see that what, what we're seeing now is, is the, the user experience is going to be completely revolutionized. Uh, you won't see these you know, browser extensions that are difficult and trying to figure out gas fees and gas limits and all this kind of stuff. It'll all be made transparent um, in the next year. So uh, people will be able to play games, have fun. Um, you'll be able to tell you know, your, your, your kids that don't have any experience or your, your, your girlfriend who has never touched blockchain or whatever it is. They can go in and start playing games and basically um, have the full experience. And, and yeah, it's, it's going to be very exciting. And where do you see Engine in five years? 
Uh, well, we, we, I mean, we, we have a five-year roadmap for Affinity. So we, we are, I think within the next year, the, the stuff that's on the white paper, we're going to get completely flushed out. Uh, and then I think through 2022, the, the goal is to bring on hundreds, if not a thousand adopters. Um, we want to have a few major brand names on board and uh, many hundreds of smaller indies that are doing experimental, interesting things. And again, we want to we want people that have that want to do something creative. We want people that 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 want to build an interesting game that want to use this technology for interesting gameplay um, to inspire the space. Um, in five years, I mean, you know, time will tell. I think the crypto five years is so long for crypto that. Uh, I, That's I, true. Yeah. <laughs> very. I, I mean, I can only think one or two years down the line here, and we have so we have a million items to get done in that time. So, yeah, it's crazy if you think about it. Where the industry was just one year ago, and where is it right now? Exactly. Yeah. NFTs wasn't weren't even people's lexicon a year ago. So, yeah. Can you can you actually um, can you compare what was it like back in 2017 when you were dabbling with the concept of NFTs? Uh, did you ever think we're getting this type of mass exposition uh, and exposure of NFTs like we are right now? Did you see this coming? Well, I'm 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 a bit I'm a bit weird because I uh, I'm a very long term thinker. Um, I think hundreds of years down the line, and so I I see this as inevitable. I I, I like to predict what's going to happen a long time into the future. Um, so I, I saw this as an infinite, an infinite uh, growth opportunity, uh, just in terms of the, the, the power of this, of this tool, right? So yeah, I, 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 it happened very soon. Um, I thought it would be five to 10 years, um, but I see this, I see us still as the, the really early days. Um, people are still very skeptical. There's the people laughing it off as just a little, you know, experiment and, uh, some people are calling it just, you know, gaming is, is, is completely, it doesn't need NFTs, it doesn't need blockchain, it's, it's completely irrelevant. But um, I, I see next few years are going to change that. I mean, you're going to see all the major platforms uh, start supporting this. So it's, it's pretty incredible. I mean, it, it was incredible thinking about it, you know, even 10 years ago, uh, with, with when this was such a small thing, like Bitcoin was just starting out. And um, my, my friends were talking about, you know, this is, this is going to be huge. Bitcoin's going to be worth a million dollars one day. And I was like, what crazy. Um, but you know what, we, we might actually see that happen in the next uh, few years. Yeah. And also thinking back, I remember when I was playing computer games, when I was little thinking, uh, and my parents were always telling me, don't waste your time playing computer games, go study and all that. But now when you think about it, a lot of people are actually finding their career path with gaming, which is amazing to me because there has been it's it's been scientifically proven that uh, playing online games can develop a lot of a lot of you like a lot of your reactions and the way you process information and all that it's just amazing to me to think how far we've come especially in this particular regard like if you if we help on twitch right now we'll see so many people streaming different games trying to pave their career if we take a look at the different games we'll see like these major tournaments with millions of dollars of prize money and people actually, of course, yeah, it's it's just crazy to me. Well, how... it's it's a medium. It's it's a complete. Yep. It's a complete medium. It's not just you know. It, it, maybe if you if you take a very myopic viewpoint of gaming and you you look at you know Super Mario or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's kind of silly, right? But um, gaming is a complete medium. It's a, it's a, it's the interactive uh, medium. So um, you know you could have text on a page. You could have movies that you watch. Uh, music that you listen to but then gaming is the interactive thing so that's the the the, the huge uh, thing it's, uh, you can do anything with it. education anything right so uh, yeah and it's, yeah it's going to continue to grow it's also something like when we talk about the metaverse and how everything is going digital i think a lot of people just fail to or don't want to realize how digital our lives already are and uh and i mean we're we have pocket metaverses in our our pockets like our smartphones they're just completely ridiculous and um also the 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 relationship thing like when playing games uh, people those who don't play games um 
don't know how many relationships you can you can build while you play games. Uh, for example, with me, the only reason I can speak English freely is because I was chatting on Ventrilo with my guildmates 15 years ago, which is it's 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 ridiculous. And now when I see how far uh, this industry has come, it's it's just so amazing to me. I'm very happy about it. And, yeah, uh, when I was uh, when I was uh, when I was playing in a guild, uh, one of our guildmates actually got married to another guildmate. So they yeah, they had yeah. a marriage, and then we actually had the marriage in game. And then then they, they went and lived together. It was it was pretty yeah. bizarre and crazy, but it was it was cool. It's it's really crazy. Yeah. Well, Vitek, thank you so much for this discussion, man. It's been a blast. I really enjoyed it. I want to wish you and uh, Engine all the best. Hopefully, you get where you want to be, and hopefully this entire journey continues uh, being as amazing as it is right now. Thank you so much.